Rise. What's up? It's Joe Rady from Rady's Rise. We're back in my backyard because guess what? It's time to plug in and get electrified. And this is the vehicle that we're going to do it with. This is a 2022 Volkswagen ID4. This particular one, though, is the top trim. It's a Pro S. What does that mean? That means we have dual electric motors. But before we get into this compact crossover SUV that is full electrified, Let's talk about what's going on here. Volkswagen, they've been around since 1930s, 1937 to be exact. The people's car, over the years, they lost some of their fan base, especially here in the United States with that whole Dieselgate scandal. Well, guess what? They're trying to win people back and also bring some new owners into the Volkswagen fold. And they are thinking that the ID4 is the way to go. Now, when you see ID, the letters ID, that's going to be a sub-brand of Volkswagen that is just purely focused on electrification. With this being their first real step, it's going to be interesting to see how they develop the lineup. It's also interesting to see how is this going to compete with the other brands. And when I say the other brands, what I want to do is I want to focus on two. I want to focus on the Toyota BZ4X. That's Toyota's new electrified crossover SUV. And that one vehicle that seems to be one in the hearts of everybody, it was North American Car of the Year, that Hyundai Ionic 5. So let's go ahead, let's dive into our all-wheel drive, because we got two electric motors, Pro S of the ID4, and find out is it the better new crossover SUV with electrification that you should be buying over the other two. Let's find out. Right off the bat, the dimensions. This is definitely a compact. It's not a subcompact and it's it's not even close to a midsize. And I kind of like that because that's gonna allow Volkswagen to really expand on this ID4 concept and lineup. Now at the front of the business, you're gonna get unique styling that only Volkswagen can do. You have LED daytime running lamps, LED turn signals. I love the way they shape the housing. Very, very smart, not to make it too large, but also not to make it too sporty, because this isn't some type of performance compact crossover SUV. You'll notice on the interior, you got that projector beam LED headlight, and then they did a nice job kind of bringing some light white on the corner here. As we kind of zoom in, you can see on the corner how they have some details. That's what separates it headlight wise from a lot of the other competitors. Now, as we work our way down, I do like the way they brought this edge and kind of flared it out in the lower corner area. What that's going to do is it allows them to drop in this flat black. It's not gloss black, and I'm happy about that. Flat black corner air curtain. Air hits the front of the vehicle. It's going to go in this functional opening and then travel down the side of the vehicle. Very clean. And then you'll notice there is a little bit of fake vent down here. What I wish they would have done, the reason why I'm going to zonk this area, after seeing the new Mark 8 GTI with their little speckled LED fog lights, they could have done that down here and it would have looked really sharp. So that is one area that could see a little bit of improvement. Now, as we come across the front, no real simulated grill whatsoever, because obviously this is an electrified vehicle. You got your Volkswagen badge in the center. You have your daytime running lamps. I love the way that with the style, they bring the LED lighting into the center portion as well. Everything body colored, and then you do have functional openings in the center. The reason why is, is that we have that liquid-cooled lithium-ion battery pack, which is in the bottom of this compact SUV. A little bit of kind of flat silver, just to give it a little bit of extra something with some sprinkling, but definitely a unique style from the front. Now, when we get up onto the hood, I do like the way the body lines are very crisp, and all of the gaps are very, it's like Egyptian pyramid tight on the body gaps. This part obviously being part of the front fascia with that cutout for the Volkswagen badge and then this portion will open up. We'll see what's underneath it. Is there a frunk? Is there just an electric motor? We'll find out. Now, as we swing out wide and come around the bend, what are we working with wheel and tire setup on our Pro S here? So what you're gonna be noticing is your traditional Volkswagen kind of wheel. And the reason why I say this tradi it's traditional, when I think Volkswagen, this is the kind of style that they bring to their wheels. Nice, large, machined aluminum areas, 
that gloss black 20 inch wheel. So you're getting a good size wheel. Tires, 235 on the width, 50 series sidewall. And what's great is with the two electric motors, like I said, you're getting all wheel drive. So we have an electric motor up front, powering the front wheels, and electric motor out back, powering the rear wheels. My one zonk, do you know what it's gonna be? Yes, you in the back, stuff in your face. Yes, the flat black. This being the pro trim and an S, I would like to see this all body colored. I think it would just clean it up, especially this red looks good in the Florida sun. I think that would have been the cherry on top. And think about it, cherry's red, this is red, kind of makes sense. Coming down the side, Volkswagen does a good job with their badging. So you have your all wheel drive with the pro and the S, the blue means that this is an electrified vehicle. They bring some of that trim into the door panel. I'm glad that that's all they did. It doesn't, it's not meant to look like a fake vent. It doesn't look like something from a JC Whitney catalog or the Pep Boys, you know, aisle number four where they got all those stick on emblems and things. It actually flows nicely and it's real close to the body. Now you do have color match on the mirror caps with a little bit of flat black and your turn singles. The silver, the silver from the front, they bring just across the top. I like it when they do that. It kind of makes it not look so heavy when they put silver at the top and the bottom. Of course, we're gonna have roof rails that are very close to the roof for aerodynamic efficiency. You'll notice we have flush mounted door handles. So they don't pop out, you actually just reach inside and the door opens and then it closes. And then on that bottom portion, we have the flat black. Comes up a little high, but I'm glad that it's flat black down there for the most part because that's gonna take a better beating than if it was all just painted red. But really the way that they did the flush mount door handles, very, very clean. You'll notice that hard body line that comes into the rear. Look at how far out they bring the trim and flare it out. It really cuts up the two-tone, because basically it's a two-tone paint job, right? You got the black roof, you got the red. This really breaks it up. It's a nice definitive line between the two colors to break up that variation. And then spinning around back, it's actually pretty sporty. This is one heck of a long, low roof spoiler. I mean, look how far it comes out and it's very close to the rear glass. I would like to see, because it does come out so far, this wiper needs to be tucked underneath there, but we have a color match, shark fin antenna. We got a full glass roof, doesn't open, but it does have a sunshade. Thank you, Volkswagen, especially out here in the hot sun. Just like up front, very interesting, intricate job on the taillights. You'll see all the little ornamental design work in there, full LED, flows nicely from one side to the other. I really like the way they dropped in the DOT required reflectors, brought it into that lower area. You got your white Volkswagen badge that's part of the ID4 brand. Obviously the badging, kind of weird name, ID4. I wish they had something a little bit more creative. And then working our way all the way to the bottom, we do have a large area of flat black with the gray. And then if you notice, what is that? That's actually a tow hookup point. So you could actually tow with this electrified SUV. But why don't we go ahead, let's pop that hood. I gotta wipe this freaking sweat and sunscreen out of my eyes because it's really stinging right about now. Let's pop the hood and see what's powering our Volkswagen ID4. All right guys, we got the hood popped. I'm not the biggest fan of where Volkswagen puts their prop rods. Another thing I'm not a fan of, kind of missed opportunity. There's a lot of things going on underneath the hood but one of those things is no storage space. So what do you have? You could actually see the engineering behind this ID4, which is kind of cool from my perspective. But like I said, I would like some storage. We got this bracing up front that ties in your shock top mounts and obviously gives you support for all the other inner bits. You have your electric motor up front and then we have that electric motor out back. The two electric motors are gonna produce combined 295 horsepower 339 pound-feet of torque, zero to 60, believe it or not, 5.4 seconds, makes this obviously the quickest ID4. It has a top speed that's governed to 112 miles per hour. It uses a 77 kilowatt per hour battery pack. And like I mentioned, you could tow with this, 2,700 pounds towing capacity. The vehicle weighs 4,884 pounds. And I know what you're saying, well, Joe, what about range? So if you go at your regular base single motor ID4, that gives you a range of 280 miles. This with the two motors has a range of 245 miles. If 
you're wondering, well, what does that equate to MPGEs? It's 103 MPGEs in the city, 96 on the highway. And then the other big question, how long does it take to charge? On a level three charger from zero to 80%, it takes 38 minutes. Here's the sad news. If you're on a level two charger, it takes anywhere between 7.5 to 11.5 hours. And here's the real sad news. If you are at home using a level one charger, which is 120 volt, and you're trying to go from zero to 100% battery life, it takes 50 hours. Now, obviously comparing this to the BZ4X, comparing to this uh, Ionic 5, their charging speeds are a lot quicker. Obviously, it's negligible between this and the BZ4X. I think we're the one that really shines when it comes to power, charging, and everything in between is gonna be that Ionic 5. But while we go ahead, let's turn this thing on and see what it looks like in motion. All right, guys, I'm plugged into the driver's seat, and I know you wanna find out what the heck is the price of this ID4. It's interesting, because you're comparing, we're comparing it to the BZ4X, we're comparing it to the Ionic 5. There's many different ways you can option it. I have shown the lower trim ID4s, and if you haven't seen those reviews, I'll leave the link at the end of this one. But this particular one, being the Pro, being the S, being all-wheel drive dual motors, you're looking at an MSRP right around $50,000. Let's see how it stacks up to the competition, to the door panels. Now, I'm really digging the color combo, and I'm not really a big chocolate brown interior kind of guy, but the, the soft material up top that's black, then you have that Hershey's chocolate brown in the center. It's a little gloss black heavy, so we're definitely gonna zonk that around the door handle and around the switch gear, but everything else is actually fairly soft to the touch. Door pocket is a pretty decent size. You could actually get four jelly-filled Dunkin' Donuts in that door pocket and a nice large cup of their famous, world-famous coffee in that door pocket. You also notice some of the ornamental design over the speaker grill. Just something different to kind of spruce up what could be a very boring door panel. Now going from the door panel to the dash, we have that chocolate set up. It's almost like a s'mores sort of. White contrast stitching, I'm liking the silver. I wish they would have done this more on the door panel instead of all that gloss black. You'll notice we have ambient lighting along the bottom portion here, which is a nice touch. And then check out our infotainment. So. We'll go to the charging setup. There's our ID4, that 12 inch screen, nice, large, easy to get to. I kind of like the way it's just pivoted enough towards the driver to make me understand that it is for me because I'm the driver. You got all of your data, all the information, the graphics are clear, very fast reacting too, if you notice. So as we kind of spin it around, you could open up the rear. You got your brakes, all different ways to do your braking in this and have that regen braking very nice and then you can get into where your locations are for charging and then watch this we go back to home here's our main screen where we have obviously our navigation apple carplay android auto let me throw it into reverse get a little bit of a whirly swirly noise in the back to make sure you don't run over anybody and then you do have trajectory and it does take up more than half of the screen Plus you got that sensory information in the back so that you're not backing over anybody as well. Hit that, we're right back where we started even though we're in, in reverse, I put it back in the park. You do have three stages of heated seats, no ventilated seats and that is a big zong to me. It needs to have ventilated seats as well but there's your three stages of heated seats, heated steering wheel. The problem is there's no buttons here, no physical buttons or knobs. So you let me know how you feel about that. I do like the way it's very easy to go like in your modes. You hit that guy there. We got our different modes. Of course, we're gonna be going sport mode. You go full traction, comfort, eco, or customize it any way you want. And then there's your climate controls. 
So you do have dual climate in here, which is great. You got that air care system. And then you have the option, you could go smart climate. You want your feet cool, you could cool your feet. You want quick cooling, it'll do it for you. I'm all about old school, I'm classic. This is what I know. Working your way down, you got the AC vents blended cleanly into that dash area. And then a very interesting sort of like floating center console. Now the problem is they should have gave me an area to actually put something here. You could put something here, but it's gonna roll around. So if, say if you have two Granny Smith apples, you fit those down there, they're gonna roll around when you go through the twisty bits. There's more of that gloss black, but here's what I really like, look at this. You could actually take these out and adjust them. You can make the openings smaller, tighter. It's like a little puzzle game. So I could do that. I could do this. So, so like, let's say you're in a rush and you gotta have your cereal. Here's what you could do, but I didn't tell you to do this. Fill it up with Golden Grams or whatever your favorite cereal is, Fruity Pebbles, uh, maybe your Wheaties kind of person. Pour the milk in here and then you just eat as you're driving to work right out of there. Now, I don't know if that's gonna mess anything up, but you could use that as a cereal bowl. Key fob, ID4s get that specific unique key fob. How do you know it's your key fob? Because you got your fingerprints all over it. Turn it around, there's your buttons on the back. It's a very sexy contemporary key fob. And I don't use the word sexy for a key fob very often, but it works. <sighs> I get this. I get how it cleans everything up, but I like a good old fashioned armrest. Now, if you're wondering, well, Joe, is there an armrest? That's what they give you. These almost like chopstick size armrests. They're captain's chairs, but I mean, I need like, like give me another one in the center and then I'll have my armrests. So there you go. I feel good like this, but like this, I'm like, like what, what's going on here? Let me just get those out of the way. So I would like an actual center console armrest. Open this up. Here's the great news. You got wireless charging, two USB-Cs, and your two cup holders. Close it up. The problem is, what happens if I have my balls and I don't want to hold them anymore? There's no place for me to really put, I guess I could put them here, but then everybody's going to see my balls. And I don't want people to see them, especially if they're signed by somebody like Jose Canseco or you know, Don Maddenly or something. So just kind of interesting how there's space in here, but there's not space in here. That's a head scratcher. Seats, don't worry, it's vegan leather. It's not real leather, so you don't have to call up Peter or anything like that. We got our ID badging. Nice soft, I mean, this stuff is soft as could be. 12-way adjustable seats for the passenger and the driver. And then really to finish it off, the big crescendo is this massive, glass roof. And what I'm so happy about is that it has an actual sunshade. Thank Wait you, Volkswagen. Minute, please. It's please now talking repeat. to me. So I don't want to talk to you right now. It does have that operation where you could talk to it. And you know, if you have no friends, it'll talk back to you. But I'm just glad that there's no sunshade. That's all I wanted to say. I don't need anything from the Volkswagen ID4 right now, but I do need something from you coming over the business end. I want to show you behind the wheel of this electrified Volkswagen. All right guys, business time. And what's awesome is comparing this to like the BZ4X and the Ionic 5, one thing that surprises me is not only do you have two memory seat settings, not only do you have 12 way adjustable seats, you do have massage seats. So that's another nice touch. Actually feels pretty good. You know, sometimes it just feels like two fists ramming you in your back. This one feels pretty nice. I'm six feet tall, even with the glass roof, plenty of room in here nice and open and it feels Volkswagen familiar in a very good way. Speaking of that, steering wheel. You got your flat bottom steering wheel for the people that love those flat bottom steering wheels. The leather all the way around. You do have that gloss black which is going to get fingerprint intensive. But if you have your blue towel like I have, you could just kind of do that just like that. It is a manual tilting and telescoping steering wheel and then you do have that five inch digital display. What's cool is if you look on the left, that's augmented reality. When you're driving down the road, it shows the other vehicles around you. So that is a nice touch. And you do have the twist operation for your different gears. Well, I shouldn't say gears, but direction you want to go in because this is a direct drive transmission. You hit P for the park and you're good to go. But that really kind of is all encompassing nicely. And I'm glad they did that. Like I prefer an electrified vehicle 
to have an actual dash. And the good news is Ionic 5, BZ4X, and this car all have some type of dash. Obviously, the Ionic 5 really brings it big with the screens. But while we go ahead, let's see who does it better in the back seat. Get what I'm saying? Of this ID. All right, guys, back seat time. And you know what? There's some space up front. There's even more space in the back seat. Here I am sitting here. I'm not even close to the headliner, not even close to the glass roof. What I do want to showcase in the back, look how flat the floor is. So here's my, my foot, there's my shoe, almost totally flat from one side to the other. The backs of the seats have that vegan leather. And what's cool is you actually have two pockets. You have a pocket up here for your favorite CDs. So maybe Hootie and the Blowfish, maybe Pearl Jam, and then a larger pocket for the 45s. So maybe you got some Elvis Presley, maybe you got some platters. You could keep the older technology, the 45s in the larger pockets and the newer tech up here. But in reality, what is it really for? This is for your cell phone. But I like to think, hey, let's put Hootie and the Blow Blowfish there. Another thing is, if you ever see the lead singer of Hootie and the Blowfish, don't ever call him Hootie, he actually hates that. Sitting back here, I feel pretty good. We do have a little command center and it's very, very low. They let you know that you're in an ID. They wanna remind you if you're ever wondering as a passenger, what the heck am I in? Two USB-Cs, AC vents, perfect for chilling your ankles. I don't know so much about chilling me. I've never seen AC vents so low before. So it'll be interesting during the drive to see how those feel. Nice armrest. Just enough real estate to make it legit. That would have been in Zonk territory if, uh, if it was a little bit more narrow. Sort of like these, these guys here, these captain's armchair armrests that look like, they're, they literally remind me of just like chopsticks. Like I would use that to eat some ramen or something, maybe some sushi. Put it back. Why don't we go ahead though? Feels pretty good here. Let's see how it feels in the cargo area of this ID. Hey guys, obviously the most important part of any SUV is gonna be that cargo area. You hit the button, you have a nice electric assist. Now, one thing I wanna point out is just notice how high that rear bumper is. It's interesting because a lot of the electrified SUVs have higher bumpers. Obviously, a lot of it has to do with the battery pack and the electric motors out back, but what do you have? At the end of the day, you got a nice, large cargo area that with the rear seats up, you're looking at 30 cubic feet of space. If you fold the rear seats down, you're basically gonna double it, actually a little bit more than double it. It's 64 cubic feet of space. What I do really, really like is first of all, we got these nooks on both sides. One box of Twinkies, and what you could do is you could take your, tink, your Twinkie strap and you could strap it in. Another thing that I love is that you got your rear seat pass through. That's a nice little setup to have that ability when you're sitting inside to reach back into the cargo area. Here's my favorite part. This is smart engineering. You actually take the floor and you can lower it. Look how much lower it is to get taller objects back here. Let's say you got some type of uh, pinata for your, uh, your kid's quince. You could put that pinata back here. Maybe even put like three or four pinatas. Go pinata crazy. And then if you're wondering, well, Joe, what about the charging things? Let me go ahead and put this back up to our regular height. It's like a little bit of a balancing game. You could use this as storage space. If you have the cargo floor in the higher setting, you could actually fill this up with gold coins. You know those chocolate gold coins that your grandmother used to give you? And you're like, you thought they were gold, but then she's like, no, they're gold, they're, they're chocolate. You're supposed to eat them. You're not supposed to put them in the bank. You could fill that area up, but watch this. Hocus Pocus Alakazam. There's actually a little tiny storage area for all your charging accessories in the back area. Close it up, one, two, three. I don't know about you, but if you're ready, I'm ready. Let's go ahead and feel the roll of electricity through our veins in this Volkswagen ID4. All right, guys, we're in this 2022 Volkswagen ID4 Pro S. It's a mouthful, but you know what? It's bringing the most that you could get into a Volkswagen ID4 product. Getting to that infotainment system, well within reach. My big zonk is there's no physical button. So something so simple, like adjusting the blower fan speed, I have to hit climate. Then once I'm in climate, now I hit the actual fan button. It's just a 
little few extra steps that on a day-to-day -day basis would just annoy me. Visibility though is phenomenal with a capital PH. Even though it's small, five inch screen, it still gives you all the information that you need, the regen braking, how much range you have, and you'll see, like I was telling you, that augmented reality, there's the Hyundai Elantra that's in front of me. There it is on that little screen there. And what's cool too is, is when you adjust it, it actually adjusts the screen as well when you adjust your steering wheel. Everything else is well laid out. I just personally know there's a lot of parents out there. There's a lot of people that like to drive around with a lot of junk with them. There's no place really to put your junk. And that's the thing that kind of bothers me a little bit in here. Other than that, these seats are superb when it comes to being comfortable. Visibility out the back is actually quite impressive because of that long, low roof spoiler. I thought it would block some of the, uh, the vision out the back. It's actually really clean. And of course, we have good size mirrors. And I do like the way and I'll lower the window here. What they do is, is they actually have the blind spot monitoring light on the inside of the housing here, rather than on the glass. I do really like that. Speaking of electrification, we have the usual Tampa electrification in the skies. There's a big thunderstorm brewing and uh, we're hopefully gonna try to avoid that. But pulling away from the light, good sensitivity on the pedal. This does not have one pedal operation. And that to me is something that's holding the, the, the ID4 back. The other competitors, they have that one pedal operation, a lot of them, it would be nice to have that. You learn to appreciate it, especially if you live in an area like California and LA and you're in that traffic situation, that's really where it makes sense. But getting out onto the highway, super smooth, you're not gonna get a stiff ride, even with those 20 inch wheels. You're getting a nice, comfortable ride. One of the things that you'll notice if you've never driven an EV is you actually hear noises more. And what I mean by that is, is usually engineers are able to take the noise and vibration of an internal combustion engine and it kind of masks a lot of the other noises and vibrations that happen while you're driving. Without that vibration from an engine, you could hear the wind noise a little bit more. You could hear the road noise a little bit more. So that's something that you need to get used to. One vehicle where I did not sense a lot of extra noise is the Cadillac Lyric. But of course, the Volkswagen ID4 is not, is not competing with the Cadillac Lyric. But here we are going down the highway, super smooth. Visibility, like I said, is champ. And then when you need a pass, on throttle, here we go. You got that all-wheel drive, two electric motors, and you just zoom off. A little bit of kind of Tron cycle noise, and then you are off and rolling down the, the road. Now, range is gonna be that one factor, and especially when it comes to charging, you're really gonna have to plan out your trips accordingly. I would think that if you are specifically just driving to and from work, and it's not a long trip, charging it at home, even if you have to use the 120, will keep you well within driving distance. But once you kind of up the mileage, obviously you're gonna need to make sure you know where those charging locations are. Uh, especially you're gonna wanna look for the level threes. But you can see how large the infotainment screen is. It's crazy to think that right now I'm getting massaged, which both the passenger and the driver have massage seats, but there's no ventilated seats. That's kind of strange. And there's no heated seats for the rear passengers. So that's another thing that I would like to see some different changes there, especially for the money. It's really weird here in Florida. It doesn't become the sunshine state anymore once a storm is brewing. As you can tell, it's almost like we're, we're driving at night. But... Uh, Everything else is very familiar in here and very well placed, which is great. And I do like the upscale feel of the two-tone interior. But I hope that this review has been overly good for you to see a lot of the changes that this ID4 has. We're gonna get back to where it all started because we need to wrap this one up and get on to the next one. So I'll see you in a split second. All right guys, it's been one heck of a day with this Volkswagen ID4 Pro S with the dual motors. 
I definitely want to thank everybody at Volkswagen for allowing us access to this press suite vehicle. Let me know what you think. Would you go ID4? Are you going to go BZ4X? Are you going to go with that big top dog right now, that Ionic 5? Let me know your choice in that comment section. But if you're new to the channel and you're on your way out, hit that subscribe button. I promise you it's worthwhile. Come back for more. If you are a subscriber, thank you for being part of the Radies Rides family. Definitely got to give it to Stephen Flood, Stephen Flood Photography. The thunder is rolling, the lightning is coming, but we continue to roll here on Radies Rides. Thank you, Stephen, for your hard work. And just like always, guys, I'll see you on the next ride.